Good morning guys, good morning internet, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm here again to narrate a time lapse of one of my artworks just so that, you know, I can discuss about the art process of how it was made and whatnot, uh, hopefully to provide you some lessons and some insights into the art creation process, so yeah, um, so today we are taking a look at Blue Moon Huntress. That is the artwork that we're taking a look at. I did this a while back. Uh, I almost want to say 2018, 2019. Oh, I was wrong. I stand corrected. This was a year ago. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was like two years ago, but obviously I'm not <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, uh, this was done in 2019. This is a prompt from conceptart.org. Um, when conceptart.org was around, uh, there's a group sub forum there called Daily Sketch Group, and you know there's prompts daily, which kind of gets my juices flowing. You know, uh, I started doing it as warm up. And then eventually it became into speed painting exercises and yada da da and all that stuff. Anyways, I love that forum uh, way back in the day. Um, but anyway, so the prompt for that day was actually Red Moon Huntress, not Blue Moon. Uh, I eventually ended up changing the Red Moon uh, because the way the colors were, it just it didn't go well. So eventually, at the end of this video, you will see me change it, change the Red Moon. To blue moon which you saw that in the background I already put down the red moon you know just to fulfill uh, the uh, requirements of the problem <laughs> so yeah but anyway so yeah that's the idea behind um, the painting uh, huntress typically denotes a person that's hunting so hence the word huntress and so, uh, my weapon of choice for the character that I'm doing a study on is obviously a bow and arrow. Uh, feels like she would make a great sniper, so yeah. Um, but anyways, let's start talking about the process. So, in this particular process, this is... Um, very very cool and i just love doing this because um for the longest time you know I, when i started doing the whole speed paint exercise and practicing speed paint it, one of the main tenets of speed painting is that you need to get your shapes down as quickly as possible because that will save you a lot of time so um i got into the whole concept slash idea of uh shape carving basically where Instead of, you know, typically drawing out your sketch and a good and then making a good line sketch out of it, I would just make some random shapes and then slowly carve it out into something readable, you know, something that makes sense. So, you know, for a person or for a character, maybe I'd start out with a rectangle or something and then just slowly just carve it out. You know until like you get a person out of, out of it so it's a nice way of uh, doing painting it is a fast way but you get a lot of errors in it sometimes you know um, predominantly like some of the errors I keep running into uh, would be like perspective issues um, and proportion issues and whatnot and so it's always great to um, do a line sketch which lately i've been doing a lot of line sketch lately because i never used to or i mean not that i never used to but ever since i started practicing speed paint for like a period of like a year or two or for three years actually because i was actually doing speed paint even before i started recording my uh, art process um for a good while it was all just shape carving and hardly any line sketch so this is the reason why I thought that this sketch was interesting because I typically don't go this far into the sketch typically if I was to do a sketch in a speed paint um, 
a session, it would be just a rough version because you see the rough version in the lower layer, layer one. It's all scratchy and really messy. And then obviously on layer three, um, I'm doing the cleaner line sketch, um, which is what I'm working on right now. Um, so yeah, I typically don't even do the clean line sketch. Typically I just do, you know, rough sketch and then I block in the color and then I would slowly start doing the whole shape carving technique and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I remember running into that technique for the first time, seeing one of, uh, Mark Burnett's, uh, videos like way back in the day, like way back in 2009. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he is actually Blue Flay slash Cube Brush. He has a YouTube channel as well as um, Deviant Art and all the popular <laughs> social media uh, portfolios. Um, anyways, he's a really good educator now. Um, but yeah, really, like some of the techniques in speed painting, I learned first from watching his YouTube videos, his very, very early YouTube videos, way back in 2009, 2010. It was so entertaining to watch. Um, and that's kind of like where I got the idea of like shape carving and um, blocking out your painting and then just, you know, taking it from there so yeah skipping the whole line sketch and whatnot but yeah it's actually kind of nice that i like lately nowadays especially i've started doing this whole cleaner line sketch approach too um especially with my characters especially when i do character illustrations i take the time to actually draw the person out uh with environment studies i don't do it as much um but yeah, lately with some of my character studies, I really do this a whole lot. Anyways, my point, going back to my point about this uh, piece was that, you know, for a period before I did this piece, it was all just speed paint process, no good line sketch. And as you can tell, I'm really taking my time making this look very, very good. Um at least for the line sketch portion and so yeah this is kind of exciting just because i don't do i didn't used to do this often enough uh, obviously um but yeah as for the piece itself um i mean you saw like the final product at the very beginning of of the video as for the piece itself like there's kind of um i'm like iffy about it you know there's aspects of it that i love um some of like the overall color scheme i call questionable again i was doing this whole you know color scheme that i kind of base of of after this graphics peter polak's techniques um and i'm still i still do that technique obviously but you know I, i'm trying to refine it and so that it's not quite as messy um basically like the way i i would do the technique is that I would get too many saturated colors and a lot of uh, my art friends have been kind of noticing that where my colors are just all over the map you know and there's plenty of times where it worked like clearly in this case like I wouldn't put this in my portfolio and I wouldn't make a video out of this if the colors were just horrendous and the colors in this one it's it's all right you know like there's a few successes like the dress uh especially in the area where i'm uh, drawing right now um this really frilly section right underneath her chest area um where all uh, i'm kind of trying to like <laughs> um kind of draw out like a baby doll kind of outfit of some sort anyways so like that area underneath her breast basically like i love the way all the color mess that i made, put on there you know i love how it created this nice texture um and wow i just looked at that resolution that resolution was really small 870 by 670 wow i don't remember I was doing this technique but in the other techniques i did was like drawing on a really small canvas and then upscaling it um 
the reason why I used to do this is that it would prevent me from doing way too many um, unnecessary details, you know. And so I would just hone in and focus in on the simple shapes first. So I used to do this a lot. I don't do this anymore. Um, it, but it is a good technique to consider, especially if you're having over detailing issues. I guess I got better with over detailing and maybe that's part of the reason why I don't do this anymore. Um, but yeah, that canvas is really small, 870 by 670, wow. Okay. But anyways, yeah, um, so clearly the sketch is done. Um, I remember looking up a Google search on, on poses too, and that's where I got the post. But anyways, I, I just mentioned that because I'm just looking at, at her post and it looks really good. And I totally forgot I was talking about the colors of her dress. The colors and the textures that I created on her dress was really cool that I didn't even end up smudging it, which is like my technique. I typically smudge all my colors in into recognizable shapes and then I put my details on top of that. Um, for this one, the only areas that I really concentrated on detailing was her face and her arms, which her arms are problematic for me too. Like the lighting on it, I, I didn't, don't like as much, you know? And I think just overall, like the lighting that I chose for the specific piece are kind of in a way questionable. I mean, I, I really like that it's lit from the bottom. You know, because it well it worked well like in the face, but in the bottom part of the illustration, maybe not as much. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like my critique on it. But the textures on her dress, like I was mentioning, it was just it just looked really good. Um, and you'll see, um, uh, it's it's so much better for me to explain it like later once the process actually happens. But. Um, for the ones that's not familiar with my process, this is typically what I do. So, um, typically I start out with a loose sketch and depending on the situation, I either do a good line sketch, which I did in this case, or I just start blocking things out. Um, but I did a good line sketch and then after that I would block things out with color, which is kind of like what I'm doing right now. Uh, this is also an old technique of mine where I would do just one dark shape at first um, to start things out and then I would uh, select where my light areas are uh, which is what I'm doing right now this is kind of uh, I'm kind of selecting all the areas where I, I think things would be light because I knew it was gonna be bottom lit right so uh, this is what I'm doing. And then as soon as I have this, I would just literally just use the random mech brush, which I so love that mech brush. It's created by uh, David Ravoy. Um, anyway, so I would just use that random mech brush, put in a hue uh, jitter on it and just throw in a bunch of colors. And, and then after I throw in a bunch of colors, I would do some value tweaks, you know? So obviously the areas that needs to be darker gets darker and uh, areas that needs to get light gets lighter. And then after that, I merge all of this mess into one layer, smudge everything, you know, kind of like a pastel technique. And then as soon as I smudge it into this base paint, then that's when I start my uh, detailing process. Um, and it goes by real fast and real quick. Um, and then depending on um, the situation, nowadays, I typically smudge everything, right? Um, but in this particular case, I didn't smudge the dress. Um, and that's the reason why I love the effect that is left, you know, because it created this texture, which, you know, it only make much more sense once it starts when I start doing <laughs> the coloring phase, which is what I'm doing right now. So you see me with a random mech brush, just randomly throwing in some colors. Sometimes I change the value, you know? I mean, you could see me choose like a darker red because I knew the area was going to be darker. And now I went to green and, you know, kind of threw in some regular green and I threw in some dark green and, 
yeah and now you could actually see me oh wow okay <laughs> that random mech brush was really fast like i didn't realize that what and did it that real quick but anyways now that i brought it back up you can see me do my um value tweaks and i'm actually trying to do some a few color dodges as well um so yeah but you can see the dress right now with all that random mech brush that i put on there i mean look at it it the the mech has all this crazy um shapes to it that are left intact and this photo bash that was an older illustration of mine called artistic killer and i decided to photo bash it photo bash it in just to get some more color information which you could see me mix this down together with that random mech brush uh and i slightly change the opacity on it to 50 percent so it's not too strong but look at it so like her dress right now just has all this crazy random um textures to it that i decided not to smudge right and when i left it intact that's like my favorite part of the illustration because it looks like she's wearing a dress with a really cool looking pattern you know so yeah that's like one of my favorite parts of the illustration and her face too i thought her face was really well sketched out um the shading on it and the rendering of it is slightly questionable uh, because i yeah i honestly feel like the values on it got like way off but as for that line sketch itself i thought that was like a really nice line sketch um so yeah but here i am doing my smudging process and after that i'm going to start my detailing process so yeah i'll talk some more about that piece afterwards after this whole smudging thing <laughs>
so clearly right now I have obviously started my detailing process um, and I'm clearly working on the face and I thought it was really funny too <laughs> I'm working on it now. it's so funny to watch how I have such a huge issue with this nose <laughs> like I'm working on it um, I have a bad tendency to draw up to your noses um, which is fine because I think upturned nose is like really cute, you know, but sometimes I make it too redundantly like upturned, like almost impossibly looking upturned nose. Um, and so, yeah, like I was having an issue with that nose because I was kind of like way off perspective wise on it and it still kind of is almost, but you know. Uh, it doesn't look nowhere near as bad if if you were to zoom out so yeah but anyways um during my detailing process i pretty much repeat like a few steps or this three-step process which is you know i mark my edges delineate my edges just to kind of make my shapes more readable um like i'm working on a hair right now and i'm adding some uh edges and whatnot and then I accentuate shadows. Uh, if the shadows need some darkening, I work on the shadows. And then I add highlights. And I do this all the way throughout the piece, obviously, section by section. And in this case of this photo, like since the background is so nice and so simple, I love the background too. That's another thing I love about this piece is the background is so simple and effective. Um, and since I'm, I'm not, I don't need to work on the background and I'm only working on a character, um, I obviously don't need to do as much details. Um, I spent the majority of, of my detail work on the face, which clearly we've just been on it for the past five minutes. So clearly I, I would have spent like at least maybe like half an hour on that face just, you know, just to kind of refine some features out and whatnot. Um, and after that, I worked on the arms uh, and the hair, obviously. And again, like I mentioned, I left that that dress alone. I mean, aside from working a little bit on the, her breast area, I pretty much left the rest of the dress alone. And like I said, all that noise that that Meg brush and that photo bash that I put in on on her dress it just looks like a nice texture um, it might be a little bit too saturated and so like I guess the saturation of the colors might compete a little bit with the overall character but the patterns in itself is is really nice wow I'm still working on the nose man that nose is so problematic for me <laughs> yeah but anyways, um, and this is what I was talking about, about the dress, you know, I just kind of just left all that pattern intact and it just, it's just so cool how I did that. Um, so yeah, um, for a quick speed paint study or speed paint a good for a quick character study. I, I thought that this was really cool. Uh, characters are, are not very easy to do a speed paint on. Just because you could just get sucked in into the details, you know, of trying to like make it look good and whatnot. So for this character study to be done so fast, I mean, this is rare for me. So I thought that this was really cool. But yeah, um, for the most part, like this illustration is like nearing completion because you know, I decided to leave the, all the patterns in the dress alone because I just love it and I still think it's cool. Uh, I'm going to work on, clearly I'm going to work on the bow uh, and the arrow um, just to, you know, make it readable. Because right now, obviously, everything's fuzzy and it's not readable. Um, so I'm obviously going to work on the bow. And then after that, you know, it's the only other edit that I pretty much did was change the red moon into the blue moon. And clearly you can see now, especially in the lower right where you can see all of the image. Um, the reason why I changed it into blue moon and desaturated the background is because that red it was just competing too much with the 
purplish pink hues that I have on a character like it was just it was just too red I feel like and then with with the green um, background as well it was just competing with her green dress so obviously it got switched to like uh, blue and brown I think it was like a neutral color and so when when I switched it out it really popped the character out more um, so yeah but yeah, I mean, overall, this illustration is is nice. Um, the saturation levels, I'm not too sure. Um, the value, I guess, uh, is really off. Like I said, um, I, I think if I was going to do the whole lit underneath effect, um, then I would have to say like her face was nicely rendered. Um, to get give that idea that is lit from underneath her right arm is nicely done her left arm though is very problematic um like it shouldn't look like that if it's lit underneath so that's a mistake that i kept intact in the piece um it, it doesn't bother me no near as much for me to make the effort of fixing it i'm like yeah it's all right um but yeah, her, the way I did, I painted the values on her right arm, which I'm working on her right arm right now. Um, it's nice. Just the left arm is just a little off. Um, there's some proportion issues as well. Uh, I think her right hand is like way off proportion wise. And her left hand, the way she's handling that, that bow, like it shouldn't be like that at all. Um, her arm should be in a different stance basically um that bow the way i rendered that bow was really cool uh all those nice little details i added on there is very techy techy looking um and here i am tweaking the background uh it should be like blue and brown or something i mean you can see me like try to choose uh, try to do light tweaks and whatnot. I don't know what happened. I thought I was gonna make the blue permanent. I guess that came on later on. I guess I was just experimenting for for now. Um, yeah, it looks like I was just experimenting for a little bit until I finally finished the uh, rest of the illustration. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Um, the the dress i guess i guess going back to my critique the dress is as nice it's one of my favorite parts <laughs> i've been going on about it for the majority of the video and then this bow which is i'm working what i'm working on right now is really nice um i eventually got rid of that string because that string was just too funky looking i replaced it with something else like a better looking string and then of course that left arm is still problematic. It almost looks like her left arm is glowing, but I digress. Yeah. And I seriously thought I went back and fixed that right arm somewhere because it looks like I could render that a little bit better, but I don't know. Maybe I touched up on it later on. I'm, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, this, this illustration is close to being finished. That's it right here. Adding those light last finishing touches in this bow. And just randomly making up some details. So yeah. And here's me fixing that line. Uh, that's it. Turn it around and Mix it all up, made it skinnier because, yeah, it was way too fat. And then I obviously took out the old line, and yeah, fun times, man. Fun times, <laughs> yeah. This is so much fun watching all this old artwork and just revisiting my art process in general, yeah. Nice character study. When am I going to change the background? I'm like trying to figure out like when I change the background because I seriously thought I would have changed it by now, but I guess not. Um, 
yeah, typically I watch like the time lapse like at least once and make my notes and then I watch it again while doing my vocal recording. So yeah, I that first time I watched it I thought at this point I would have already switched to blue, but I didn't. Cause I, I just wanted to see that blue. Cause it really has such a huge effect in all honesty. Once I switch it down it to blue, like you'll see you know the character just like come pop out more forward basically. So yeah. There it is. There. There you go. There was my blue. Yep. After doing all those edits, I realized blue is the best. And then I did some lighter edits on the foreground. And I think I desaturated the background as well. But yeah, this piece is complete. Once again, guys, I am so glad that you watch it with me. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.